The Queen and Mr. Brown. A day for dinosaurs. The Queen and Mr. Brown. A day for dinosaurs. The Queen drew back the curtains and looked out. Mr. Brown, it's snowing, she called. He padded to the window and propped his paws against the sill. Flakes of wet snow were falling like stones from the sky. It was grey, gloomy and unbearably miserable. Thank heavens he was inside in the warmth. They're like blobs of cotton wool. Aren't they beautiful? She continued. Mr Brown could see no beauty. He saw only a horrible, wet, cold day. The Queen was not deterred. I think we'll visit the dinosaurs today, she said. After breakfast, she dressed Mr Brown and put on her warmest coat. She would not let the weather spoil her day off. They would make the best of it and visit the dinosaurs at the Natural History Museum in South Kensington. They went out through the side entrance of the palace. Mr Brown shuddered. He hated snow, especially snow like this. This was certainly not weather for a royal corgi. But the Queen was insistent, so he tucked his head into his coat and stepped out cautiously. The weather was no obstacle to the tourists. A group of them stood gazing through the palace railings. The Queen sometimes felt like a monkey in a cage. She half expected that they would try feeding her peanuts one day. The Queen and Mr Brown joined the lines of people who were crossing the park. Some were on their way to work, others to shop. They kept their heads down against the weather and said little. It was like a silent ballet. The Queen smiled at her little friend. It's a good day for dinosaurs, isn't it? It took them half an hour to walk to the museum, by which time Mr Brown was as miserable as the weather. He would have preferred to stay at home and watch television from a comfortable chair. As they entered the museum, Mr Brown froze in his tracks. He had not been there before and had no idea what to expect. What he saw shocked him. <gasps> An immense dinosaur skeleton stretching the length of the entrance hall peered down at visitors as they came in. Mr Brown knew it was dead but he was taking no chances. Even a dead dinosaur must be treated with extreme caution. He tried to make himself small and pressed close to the Queen. They left their coats in the cloakroom and walked to the dinosaur gallery. More giant skeletons stood in rows. The Queen wondered what they had looked like when they were alive, for no one has seen a living dinosaur. They lived long ago before there were people on the earth, and they were the most powerful of all creatures. But then, for some strange reason, they all died out. There were many types of dinosaur, some like Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, Mananchiosaurus were vegetarian and they had very long necks so they could eat from trees. Others like Megalosaurus, Carnotaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex were ferocious meat eaters. They had large heads and strong back legs for running after their prey. Once Mr. Brown had grown used to the skeletons, he was quickly bored and wandered off by himself. But the Queen was fascinated. She wanted to understand everything and read all there was to read. 
she looked in awe at the model of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It had seven it had teeth seven inches long and a mouth so big it could have swallowed her whole. It was so realistic it seemed to be alive. She gazed in wonder at another display. It was right it was the right foot of an iguanodon, which was which had suffered arthritis one hundred million years ago, just like people do now. Nothing really changes, she thought. And then she read how the dinosaurs had died out. Scientists think that a gigantic rock fell from the sky, stirring up so much dust that the sun was hidden for three months. This caused the earth to become very, very cold. Too cold for dinosaurs. This is probably what happened. But maybe, just maybe, they killed themselves by jumping off a cliff. They were overwhelmed by the stink of their own poo. They bored themselves to death. Or aliens came from outer space and ate them for breakfast. Ugh. As the Queen stood imagining the various possibilities, it occurred to her that she hadn't seen Mr. Brown for a long time. She hurried off to in search for him and found him fast asleep, stretched out in front of a huge bone. She woke up. He woke up and they looked at it together. Left thigh bone of an Aptosaurus, she read. It was as tall as she was. Not even in his dreams had Mr. Brown imagined such a magnificent bone. They had now spent half the day in the museum and the Queen was beginning to feel tired. She sat down on a bench and ate a sandwich. She then fed Mr. Brown some biscuits while she thought about the things she had seen. It was pleasantly warm in the museum and it wasn't long before she found herself nodding off to sleep. Mr. Brown flopped next to her and closed his eyes. In the distance, she could hear a noise, familiar noise, the one she loved to hear. It was the sound of the crowd at Ascot, and they were chanting a name over and over again. As she listened, she suddenly realised that it was her name they were chanting. She was not watching a race. She was taking part in one. Her mount was lunging forward with, with giant strides. Instinctively, she, she urged it on. But she was such a powerful beast, she had def difficulty controlling it. She had even bigger shock when she glanced down. And it was not a horse she was riding. <gasps> oh, it was a Megalosaurus. The giant creature was pounding along, snorting out breath, and with every footfall the ground shuddered, and she was jolted violently and nearly thrown from its back. The queen was a good rider, but she had never ridden a monster like this. <sighs> the crowd were chanting her name because the, she was leading the race, but she hardly heard them as she needed all her concentration to avoid being thrown under the feet of the other dinosaurs. They raced around the final curve of the track and thundered down the home straight. The finishing post was in sight, and she dug her feet into the animal side, spurring it on. She had only had to keep going to be the winner, and she liked winning. But the crowd had started to chant another name, and she could hear another dinosaur close behind her and getting closer. She glanced over her shoulder only to see the tiny body of Mr. Brown bouncing up and down like a ball on the back of a Carnotaurus. It was his name the crowd were chanting now. He was just determined to win, but the Queen was the Queen as the Queen was, and he held on doggedly until he was almost level with her. As they came to the winning post, 
Mr. Brown's dinosaur dipped his head like a sprinter and crossed the line inches ahead of the Queen's dinosaur. The Queen could hardly believe it. She had been pipped at the post by her best friend. It was too annoying. The crowd surged excitedly around Mr. Brown and his Carnotaurus and it was led into the winner's enclosure, sweating and steaming. Everybody clapped and cheered and Mr. Brown was ecstatic. He sprang from his mount in a victory leap and he had, had seen on, as he'd seen it on television for he had spent many afternoons watching horse racing and knew all about it. But what he did not know until this moment was the beautiful feeling of winning. He was presented with a winner's trophy which had his name engraved on it. Under those previous winners, his joy was boundless and his stumpy little tail just wouldn't stop wagging. Madame, Madame, we're closing now, said a friendly voice. The Queen tried to focus her thoughts and looked up at the museum attendant smiling down at it. Dear me, oh, I must have been sleeping, she said as she got to her feet. I'll take you to the exit, he said, and walked along beside them. I don't blame you coming in here for the weather, he continued. I hope you got a nice warm home to go back to. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, I do. It's very kind of you to inquire, she replied, quite touched by his concern. The weather outside was now truly atrocious, with driving snow. Mr. Brown struggled through the slush and icy puddles. His stubby little legs were not designed for this. The Queen remained strangely silent for some funny reason, perhaps wounded by pride. Perhaps wounded pride. She did not like telling him about her dream. But eventually, she did say something. I wonder why the dinosaurs really did die out. Mr. Brown grimaced. Sometimes he just did not understand her. If he had been able to speak, he would have screamed out. It's because they went out in weather like this. But he kept quiet and thought of his warm basket waiting for him back at the palace. The end, big boy. The end. The Queen and Mr. Brown. A day for dinosaurs. The end.